What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back to my unit review series. In this series, I take a look at the new units released in the game and tell you how good they are. And this time, I'll be reviewing Burkut. And in this video, I'll be telling you guys how good he is and what are some of his best gun entrance options. We will also take a look at some of his teammates who can support him and some counters that you should watch out for when using him. And at the end, I'll also tell you guys if it's worth upgrading him to 5 star or not in my opinion. So Burkut is the 12th Grand Hero Battle Unit in the game and looking at his 5 star stats, his HP stat is pretty good for a Cavalier unit and it's actually 1 point higher than Camus and his base attack is highest for a blue Cavalier unit and actually the second highest for a Cavalier unit in the whole game but since he does not have a legendary weapon like Camus or Xander, in the end he'll have the same attack as them after equipping his default weapon. His speed is absolutely pathetic making him the slowest cavalier unit in the game and he actually has the same speed stat as an armored unit like Effie and the thing is that Effie can actually be faster than him if she has plus speed IV so that's really bad for him and he will get doubled by pretty much everyone in the meta game and no you cannot make him inherit very fighter because that's the skill restricted to armored units. His defense stat is amazing making him a great frontline unit and his resistance is actually better compared to other free to play cavalier units like uh, Xander and Camus that we have got recently and he is actually pretty bulky on both spectrums but the lack of distant counter built into his weapon means that he won't be able to retaliate back to his magical enemies except for dragons. His default weapon is Burkut's Lance Plus which gives him plus 4 resistance when he gets attack meaning it only works in enemy phase. This weapon is pretty disappointing because he got this weapon instead of his signature weapon which has got distant counter skill built into it but I guess this does make sense because the Burkut that we got in Heroes is most likely from chapter 3 from Fire Emblem Echoes and not from chapter 5 but still they could have made it so that um, his weapon would have got distant defense skill built into it or something like that which would have been much better than just giving him plus 4 resistance. His slotty skill is water boost which gives him plus 6 resistance if he has got 3 more HP than his enemy. With the skill and with his weapon he can reach 34 resistance which is actually really high and that allows him to tank hits from some of the strongest mages in the game but like I said what do you do from there? Since he cannot retaliate back to these mages, he cannot actually kill them after tanking their heads, so it's only really useful for baiting up mages with Burkut. Still, the skill is not really that consistent as you will always have to try to keep him at full health to give him the maximum chance of activating this skill. His Slotsy skill is Ward Cavalry which gives plus 4 defense and plus 4 resistance to horse units near 2 spaces. The skill is pretty nice as it can be stacked with other Ward, Goat and Spur skills. Blazing Flame is a special and it's a 5 turn cooldown move and just like all other 5 turn cooldown specials, this special is not very practical for arena usage and something like Bonfire is actually much better for him. But for Tempest Trials, this skill can be good as it gives him an area on effect attack and enemies there have got insane HP stats so there the skill can be useful. I was actually really hyped for Burkut and I even predicted that he would be the next Grand Hero Battle unit before he was even announced or data mined but he turned out to be pretty disappointing. He honestly didn't deserve this treatment and they could have made him much better unit because in Shadows of Valentia, he's a formidable opponent whenever you face him in the game. Also the fact that we have got other top tier free to play cavalry units like Xander and Camus from previous Grand Hero battles, that just makes Burkut look quite inferior when compared to them. Overall he's an average unit with his default kit but he can become much better and actually really strong with investment from skill inheritance. So let's take a look at some of his best skill inheritance options. I'll start with Burkut's budget set. For Slotty he has got two main options, Fury and Attack plus 3. Now Fury is not very synergetic with quick repose but it does help him reduce some of his losses in his matchup chart by giving him extra bulk and a bulky cavalier like Burkut always appreciates more bulk. There's always gonna be times where Fury will knock you out of the quick repose range especially if you're running quick repose too so that's why attack plus 3 is a very cheap option which does the job however unlike Fury it does not give you bulk but only 3 attack. I'd probably run attack plus 3 just for the fact that the chance of my slot A skill knocking me out of my slot B skill will not be there so it's much more consistent in my opinion. 
For slot B, a tanky and slow unit like Berku does need Quick Repose to function in the enemy phase, and since Quick Repose 3 is locked behind 5 star units, you can even run Quick Repose 2 as the difference is not really that big. Threatened defense from a 4 star parry will help him increase his damage output, and after the debuff, he can kill more units. However, if you're using him on a Horse Emblem team, then you can definitely run Hone Cavalry or Fortify Cavalry, or even his default Scale Ward Cavalry. Reposition will increase his utility on your team, and you can run Bonfire or Moonbow as a special. Both are viable options, but Bonfire gives him better damage output since he's so slow and he will get doubled by most units. So on the Burkut second attack from his Quick Repose skill, he will activate Bonfire and many times just kill his opponent as it will give him 15 points of additional damage which is really consistent and good. The max SP cost of this build is 2355 SP if you go with Fury and Quick Repose 3 and if you go with the budget options of Attack Plus 3 and Quick Repose 2 then the cost of this build is 1785 SP. Barracoot also has a player phase skill set that can be run and it's a brash assault set. For slot A, he has got 3 main options. Deathblow is the best option for this set and it gives him really good amount of power required for killing. Even if you do not have Deathblow 3 available, Deathblow 2 from a 4 star FE or Hawkeye can also work and it's still a very good option. Sturdy Blow is also another option but it's quite expensive as you will have to fodder off a 5 star Athena but it does give him extra bulk to survive for longer, however it does not really give him more wins than Deathblow. Defiant Attack also works if you cannot run Deathblow due to lack of Klein, Hawkeye or Effie as it gives him the same results as Deathblow 3. However, there is a main flaw with the skill and that is that it cannot stack up with Hone Attack. That's why Deathblow is the best option out of these three skills. Brash Assault is a good skill for a unit like Burkut who has got high defense and good attack and this skill gives him double attack against all melee units which is really great and Brash Assault in my opinion is pretty underrated and can be really good if you make good use of the defensive tiles. Threaten Defense is to make sure that he can one round kill more units and Reciprocal Aid allows him to swiftly fall into the Brash Assault range while healing up his teammates. Moonbow is absolute must on this set because the main point of this set is to get more one round KOs and Moonbow's lower cooldown helps you with that. For his Sacred Seal you want to run Attack plus 1 and these max SP cost of this set if you go with Sturdy Blow is 2340 SP and the minimum cost if you go with Death Blow is 2250 SP. This is his matchup chart with this set and it's actually much better than his Quick Repose set but it's not that consistent due to Brash Assault only working below 50% HP but on defensive tiles like I said Burkut can be a really powerful unit with this set. Now let's take a look at a set which makes him a really great enemy face unit. This is a distant counter set and this allows Burkut to fully utilize his weapon and he does have better resistance than Camus and Xander so he can take magical hits much better compared to them. So you want to run Quick Repose to make sure that you can one round kill a lot of things. However, if you want him to be a specialized magic check, then you can even run Red Tome Breaker as stuff like Desperation Tharja will not be able to double him and kill him. And here are some of the things which Red Tome Breaker Burkut can do. He can actually survive one hit from a Blade Tome Leo who is plus 10 merged with plus attack IV and who has got life and death and all of the horse emblem buffs. That's quite impressive in my opinion that Burkut is able to take this hit and kill Leo. Leo isn't all that common so here he's up against a fully buffed Tharja who's buffed by Erika or Ephraim and she's also plus 10 merge with plus attack IV and he can survive that and kill Tharja so that can be a really great way of checking red units if you give him red tome breaker. So the choice is up to you if you want to give them quick repost or red tome breaker. Now let's take a look at his final set. This set in my opinion is the best set for him due to the fact that how offensive this set is. This set makes Burkut a complete monster and it's a Brave Lance plus set and for Slotty you definitely want to go with Deathblow even if you do not have a 4 star client like I said Deathblow 2 works from a 4 star FE or Hawkeye and if you do not have like any Deathblow fodder then Fury and Attack plus 3 are some options as well. For Slot B, Dragback gives him a retreat option while with Lance Breaker he can kill every single Lance unit in the game except for Effie and Lucas and you want to run Quicken Pulse and Moonbow and it will function similarly to how it functions for Reinhardt and this setup gives him a lot of wins as you can see by his matchup chart. He becomes a really strong unit and even a budget set is possible if you do not want to fodder off a 5 star unit so you could just give him a standard break 
Brave Lance, Prome 3 star Donald and attack plus 3 and drag back and he will still do a very nice job as you can see. So those are his best Galantan's options, now let's take a look at some of his best teammates. He will need some green or blue magic checks like Julia, Sorin or Sonia who can run green Tomb Breaker and take out those mages for him and strong red units will definitely make Burkut's job easier by taking out units like Hector who will always stand in his way and Dalthea is also a very good partner with Burkut due to her dark aura weapon especially with his Brave Lance plus set he can be really terrifying when he gets the plus 6 attack boost from her dark aura. Some passive healers are also recommended as teammates if you're using quick repose as a slot B skill. Some of these axe units can even take on his most fearsome brave lance plus set after he has got the plus 6 attack boost from Delphia and they will always live and kill him. Green and blue mages like these are a problem for him not only because they hit hard but they are also faster than him even if they have got a minus B IV and Burkut can deal with red mages but these blue and green mages are really common especially Nino so that will make things tough for him and now I will tell you guys my opinion if you should upgrade him to 5 star or not. If you literally have no lance unit on your roster then I guess you can upgrade him but still everyone has got a Sharina and Sharina is a way better candidate than Burkut to be upgraded and Sharina can also support your team and she can also be a bonus unit in arena as she is one of the rotation units in arena every week along with Anna and Alphonse. You can definitely build a budget Brave Lance build which I showed you before and Burkut can be really powerful with that build. Now there are many reasons why you shouldn't upgrade him. Camus completely outclasses Burkut. Speaking statistically there is no reason why you shouldn't upgrade Camus over Burkut. He can be an expensive unit to build as he will need distant counter from Hector or Brave Lance Plus to reach his maximum potential so that's something and this meta game is heavily offensively based and it's all about getting one round KOs and having this low speed is like really bad so that stat alone reduces his chances of survival and Clive is gonna be the next Ranji hero battle unit and as much as I hate saying this but Clive is actually slightly better than Burkut. No, it isn't true. It can't be. I, I refuse to believe it. Nothing but lies. Lies! 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 Yeah, it's pretty sad but Clive has got 1 point higher defense and 3 points higher speed than Burkut at the cost of having bad resistance and 1 point less base attack. So that does make him slightly better than Burkut mainly because of the extra 3 speed points. All this probably best to save your feathers for future Grand Hero Battle units as both of these units do look underwhelming when we have got amazing units like Xander, Camus, Legion and Zephiel in the past. However Burkut's voice acting and how good of a villain he was in Fire Emblem Echoes makes him a much better character than Clive in my books and that might be one of the reasons why people who are passionate about him will upgrade him and invest in him which is respectable and that would definitely make Burkut happy that someone believed in him and and in all of the efforts that he has been putting throughout his life to achieve his dream. So that's gonna conclude my unit review of him. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like as it helps me a lot. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.